These are the brave who resisted the king's command, saying in this matter, it is our duty to disobey. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, those joining us online today on this streaming of our feast day mass at our school here at St Thomas More High School, a very warm welcome to you all. As ever on our feast day, we begin the mass by listening to the speech that Sir Thomas More made at his execution. And as always, and as ever, our head teacher reads this speech. Early on the 6th of July, 1535, Sir Thomas Pope came to announce his execution. Mr Pope, for your good tidings I most heartily thank you. I have always been bounded much to the King's Highness for the many gifts which he hath still, from time to time, bountifully heaped upon me. And yet more bounden am I to his grace for putting me into this place where I have had sufficient time and space to have remembrance of my last end. And so help me God most of all, Mr Pope. I am grateful to his grace that it pleased him so shortly to rid me of the miseries of this wretched world. And therefore will I not fail to pray most earnestly for his grace, both here and in another world. Pope was moved to tears. But the martyr comforted him, saying, Quiet yourself, Mr Pope, and be not discomforted, for I trust we shall, once in heaven, see each other for merrily. He put on his best apparel, given to him by his Italian merchant friend Bonvisi, as he had done on festivals of the church. The lieutenant would dissuade him, since it would become the perquisite of a rascal. What, Mr Lieutenant, came the reply, shall I account him a rascal, who will do me this day so singular a benefit. May I assure you, were it cloth of gold, I would account it well bestowed upon him. He sent the headman of that little money that was left him, an angel of gold. He came forth, says Stapleton, in his servant's gown of frieze, following in the poverty of his master. His grandson, Press Acre, tells us that he had grown a long beard and carried in his hand a red cross, looking often towards heaven. They reached the scaffold. It looked rickety. I pray you, Mr. Lieutenant, said Moore, I pray you, see me safe up, and for my coming down, let me shift for myself. He began to speak a few words to the people, but the sheriff would dissuade him. And so briefly he desired all the people to bear witness that he died in and for the faith of the Holy Catholic Church, a faithful servant of the King, but God's servant first. Kneeling down, he pronounced with great devotion the miserere psalm, which being ended, he cheerfully rose up. The executioner, asking his forgiveness, he said, that will do me this day so singular a benefit than any mortal man can give. Pluck up thy spirits, man, and be not afraid to do thy office. My neck is short. Take heed, therefore, that thou strike not awry for saving thy honesty. When they would have covered his eyes, he said, I will do so myself, and presently he did so with a cloth he had brought with him for the purpose. Then he laid his head upon the block. He bade the executioner stay a while as he removed aside his beard, saying that that had committed no treason. Then with great alacrity and spiritual joy, he received the fatal blow of the axe. never ceases to move me year after year when we hear those words of Sir Thomas More before his execution. 
the bravery of Saints John Fisher and Thomas More, whose feast we keep today, of course, is a great, great example for every Catholic in this land, and indeed for every Christian that wants to put God first in their lives. And so, as I gaze on an empty chapel here, instead of the blazers emblazoned with God's servant first, let us join together in this celebration and give thanks for the life of our patron this day. And we offer this Mass for all staff and students of this school. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Let us say together at home, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in martyrdom have brought true faith to its highest expression. Graciously grant that strengthened through the intercession of Saints John Fisher and Thomas More, we may confirm by the witness of our life the faith we profess with our lips through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. One God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. Eleazar, one of the foremost teachers of the law, a man already advanced in years and of most noble appearance, was being forced to open his mouth wide to swallow pig's flesh. Those in charge of the, of the impious banquet because of their long-standing friendship with him took him aside and privately urged him to have meat brought from a kind, brought of a kind he could properly use, prepared by himself and only pretend to eat the portions of sacrificial meat as prescribed by the king. Such pretense, he said, does not square with our time of life. Many young people would suppose that Eleazar, at the age of 90, had conformed to the foreigner's way of life. And because I had played this part for the sake of a paltry brief spell of life, might themselves be led astray on my account. I should only bring defilement and disgrace on my old age. Even though for the moment I avoid execution by man, I can never, living or dead, elude the grasp of the Almighty. Therefore, if I am man enough to quit this life here and now, I shall prove myself worthy of my old age, and I shall have left the young a noble example of how to make a good death, eagerly and generously, for the venerable and holy laws. With these words he went straight to the block. His escorts, so recently well disposed towards him, turned against him after this declaration, 
which was regarded as sheer madness. Before he died under the blows, he groaned aloud and said, The Lord, whose knowledge is holy, sees clearly that, though I might have escaped death, whatever agonies of body I now endure under this bludgeoning, in my soul I am glad to suffer, because of the awe which he inspires in me. This was how he died, leaving his death as an example of nobility and a record of virtue not only for the young, but for the great majority of the nation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I take refuge. Let me, let me never be put to shame. In your justice set me free. Into your hands I commend my spirit. It is you who will redeem me, Lord. Father, Father into, into your, your hands, hands I commend, commend my spirit. spirit. You who have seen my affliction and taken heed of my soul's distress, have not handed me over to the enemy, but set my feet at large. Father, Father into, into your, your hands, hands I commend my, my spirit. spirit. But as for me, I trust in you, Lord. I say, you are my God. My life is in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of those who hate me. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your love. Be strong, let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Happy the man who stands firm when trials come. He has proved himself and will win the crown of life. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care that no one deceives you, because many will come using my name and saying, I am the Christ, and they will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumours of wars. Do not be alarmed, for this is something that must happen, but the end will not be yet. For nation will fight against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes here and there. All this is only the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured and put to death, and you will be hated by all the nations on account of my name. And then many will fall away. Men will betray one another and hate one another. Many false prophets will arise. They will deceive many, and with the increase of lawlessness, love in most men will grow cold. But the man who stands firm to the end will be saved. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. We had such great plans for this Mass today. Uh, it was last year towards the uh, end of the autumn that we sat in Mrs Apred's office uh, with Bishop Allen and the chaplaincy team here arranging the Mass which would have been Friday, the Feast of the Sacred Heart combined with our Thomas More Feast Day and the Mass was planned to be outside under a canopy and Bishop Allen was going to bless the new building and like all great Tommy Moore days, and I was saying before the Mass to a head teacher here, they'll start my 10th year working in the school now, and they're always great fun. The Mass is a great celebration, it's full of joy, even though it's a very serious message that is given to us before his execution, of course. And the many games that you play out on the pitch, sometimes joined by the clergy, uh, the lovely buffet, when will it all return? Well, we don't know. But what we do know is that God is eternal and that he loves us. And if we keep on track, things will start, we know, to form a sense of normality again. 
And it's that sense of normality that we hear about every single day, uh, around about five o'clock, isn't it, when we eagerly tune in to uh, Downing Street and we hear uh, from either the Prime Minister or his aides, people from the Cabinet, and two people from the science aspect of coronavirus, where we hear about how we're doing. And every day we have to hear, sadly, how many people have died. It's the most unusual thing that would have happened in our lifetime. We could never, ever have predicted this, could we? And politicians, depending whatever your political leaning is, have a very, very difficult job in talking to us, that we trust them, that they're doing all they can to get our country back into its feet. But it's not just us, is it? It's the whole world. So we continue to pray. So as we prepared for this Mass, I started to think, I wonder how Thomas More would have approached this in Downing Street. Coming to the Ambo, remember it was St John Paul II that gave St Thomas More that title of patron of statesmen and politicians. So all politicians can look to him today and ask for his prayers, his strength and above all his courage. And we call it in the church integrity because there is a truth in integrity that if you keep that integrity, despite what happens, you will have been true to God. You will have indeed been his servant first. So I'm wondering if Thomas More would come out at Downing Street and say, first of all, how can anyone be silly enough to think himself better than other people? because his clothes are made of finer wool and thread than theirs. After all, those fine clothes were once worn by a sheep, and they never turned it into anything better than a sheep. And perhaps when the going gets tough, and suddenly interviewers from the TV, they're really tough, aren't they, on the, on the people from the government? They might turn around and say, ah, oh, but you wouldn't abandon a ship in a storm just because you couldn't control the winds. And then with the furlough scheme, he might say, nobody owns anything, but everyone is rich. For what greater wealth can there be than cheerfulness, peace of mind, and freedom from anxiety? You know, friends, if you haven't experienced some anxiety during this time, then, well, uh, you've been brilliant, because I think all of us have been very anxious especially within our school, how to get people back. I'm telling you now, the SLT team and the governors have been doing a fantastic job. They really have. And we want to get back as soon as we can for everyone's peace of mind, more than anything else, actually, because that will help us, again, be on the road to what we call normality. The things I've just said are actually the words of Thomas More from his book Utopia. So if you haven't read it or it's on your bookshelf, I'd get it out again because everything he says just seems to ring true with what's happening at this moment in time. He says, the folly of men has enhanced the value of gold and silver because of their scarcity. Whereas on the contrary, it is their opinion that nature, as an indulgent parent, has freely given us all the best things in great abundance, such as water and earth, but has laid up and hid from us the things that are vain and useless. I think you get the drift. If Thomas More was at that lectern, ooh, I think the questions that come from uh, some of the people that ask the questions might be a little bit more... Well, you know what I'm saying. So on this day, we might think about the world as it stands now. Our country, our school, and everything that's important to us, our family members, our friends. And if any of you have had relations who have sadly died from this virus, then our prayers in this Mass are for you. They really are. I think it's something that he says in Utopia that is a great message to our students here. One of the things I've often asked our students is, 
Have any of you got an interest in politics? Would you go into politics? We're always asking the boys, are they interested in the priesthood as well? But this generation will be the next generation of politicians, so a lot hangs on how they think, their ideologies, and their integrity. And Thomas More says this, anyone who campaigns for public office becomes disqualified for holding any office at all. Such wise words from Utopia. And so on this day, more than 400 years after his death, Thomas More, canonised in the Catholic Church by Pope Pius XI, was later declared the patron saint of lawyers and statesmen. And he shares this feast day, of course, with St John Fisher, the only bishop during the English Reformation to maintain his allegiance to the truth, to the Catholic faith and to the Holy Father. I think perhaps we need to understand just a little bit more why St Thomas More, Tommy More to us in this school, not disrespectfully because we know what it means to be a Tommy More boy, that this great saint for us, in this time of uncertainty, gives us the encouragement we need to know that with faith in God and putting him first, all will be well. Surely all will be well until we meet together merrily in heaven. And so on this day, may we all be blessed by the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join us now for our bidding prayers. In faith and hope and in love on this our school feast day, we bring our prayers to the throne of grace. We pray in thanksgiving for the life and witness of St Thomas More. May this school community which stands in his name draw strength and encouragement from his conviction that he was God's servant first. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for each member of our school community and for their families, especially in these difficult times of lockdown due to the coronavirus pandemic. For those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, those who are in hospital, those who continue to shield, those who are on their own, and those who are unable to have any family to visit them. May they each experience the blessing, the strength, and the power of the risen Lord, and for the warmth of his love and healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who experience loneliness, heightened anxiety, unemployment or mental illness, that they are kept in prayer to see your light in their darkness your hope in their future, and your love around them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world. In particular, we pray for those nations struggling with continued war, violence, political unrest and natural disaster. May we, through our charity, stand together with all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for an end to racism, hate and violence in the world, and that we see God's creative design in all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bow our heads and in silence we bring to mind all of those for whom we have been asked to pray. We ask Mary, our mother, to intercede for us as we pray together. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And so as we prepare to offer the holy sacrifice of the Mass this day, for all staff and students of this school, we remember those from this school, both staff and students who have died. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Eternal Father, gracious God, hear the prayers we have made in faith for the sake of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, Holy Father, the offerings we bring on the feast of the holy martyrs, Saint John Fisher and Thomas More, and grant that we, your servants, may be found steadfast in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs, Saints John Fisher and Thomas More, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvellous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts, 
we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, our patron Saint Thomas More, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis Apple and Alan our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this school family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, and most especially past staff and students of this school, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours. Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter into my relief, but to only save the world, world and my soul shall be healed. Holy men shed their glorious blood for the Lord. They loved Christ in their life. They imitated him in their death and therefore were crowned in triumph. Let us pray. Renew us, Lord, we pray, with this food from heaven, and strengthen us by the example and prayers of your martyrs, Saints John Fisher and Thomas More, so that always following the voice of conscience, we may ever be your good servants. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us on this live stream on the YouTube channel, the school's channel here. 
uh, today and uh, it's great for me because I've been streaming live masses since lockdown began to an empty room so there's people been responding to the mass which is absolutely lovely. Thank you uh, to uh, the Deputy Head here and to Jeff who's been working the camera. Thank you so much for today. And so we'll end with the blessing and then we'll say the Angelus together. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And so may the holy angels and saints of God watch over you and protect you. May St Thomas More pray for you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go forth in peace. Thanks. Thanks be be to God. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray more forth. We beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought into the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the divine assistance remain with us always, and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God. Rest in peace.